In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul Amadeus Lane in the tech zone. Welcome back to the show, Paul Amadeus Lane, Tech Zone, ABC News Radio, iHeart, YouTube, live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in and checking out the show. If you missed the first part of the show, uh, we had Izzy Santa on uh, from the Consumer Technology Association letting us know what these new tariffs are going to do to us and how it's going to affect the, the business industry, the tech industry an everyday consumer. So if you missed that, you can always go back and check it out. All right, you're in business, or you've been in business for a while, or you're contemplating being in business. There's a lot of things out there that, that can help us to, to do our business and do it correctly. Enter data hubs. That's where we make and store information, store a lot of things, but sometimes it gets confusing. Sometimes we're wondering, do I need that with my business, or what's it all about? Well, my next guest is going to talk about how their company is using their innovation to help companies and enterprises worldwide. And I'm so happy to have with me right now the CMO of Samarkey, Michael Hiskey joins me. Michael, welcome to the program. How are you? Great to be here. I'm good. Great to have you on, my friend. So, but, but before we talk about uh, just the, uh, the problem solving that you guys do over at Samarki with organizations and, and different and different companies out there. Why don't you give us a, a history of Samarki and and how did the vision come about? Right on. So uh, the team that founded Samarki uh, originally founded another company called Synopsys years ago. And uh, they sold that organization to Oracle in 2006. It lives on today as something called Oracle Data Integrator. So from that background in data integration, they started to look at the concepts of master data and data governance and data quality and thought about that as one conjoined problem and started thinking about how you would solve that. So they left Oracle in 2010 and they started Smarky in 2011, building on that concept of a data hub that would address all of those capabilities in parallel in a single platform. So these are the proceeds from that sale to found the company that exists today. And since then, it's been great. So the company was founded in Lyon, France, grew into the UK, uh, the US a few years ago. Uh, I came on uh, in January 2017 to help grow the business as we expand the global footprint and sort of get make our way with mostly Fortune 1000 enterprise organizations. Today we have uh, a number of them uh, around the world and the company's been growing nicely 70% year on year over that time. And Michael, when it comes to uh, you coming over to the company with your background, how did you know that this was a perfect fit for you with, with your experience and said, hey, I want to. I want to be a part of this team. No, uh, so I'm a data guy. Uh, I fell in love with the data world when back when they used to still call business intelligence tools decision support systems, which I really think was a better name than uh, business intelligence. Um, worked for a company called Informix that was acquired by IBM. I spent 10 years at IBM. While I was at IBM, I did sort of lots of different roles within IBM from development, through marketing, through sales. And I've really seen all of this industry grow through the big data and analytics trends uh, and through the uh, focus on in-memory databases and lots of different bits of, dif different bits of technology, graph and data catalogs, et cetera. In the end of the day, what people really want is an application to do stuff with data. It's really just that simple, an application to do stuff with data. And the Samarki team uh, has all that, and they uh, hired developers at Google to get this very simplistic user interface uh, that really solves for what business type people are doing with data. And then that's always been the key. So throughout my whole career, we've always talked about this idea of when you get the business users on board and regular folks that have a high contextual understanding of the data could be doing interesting things with that information and sort of self-serve, then you've got it. And that's what excited me and why I came to Smarky and why I continue to lead marketing and strategy today. Nice, nice. And, and Michael, when we look at the way 
uh, technology exists today, no matter what business a person is in or organization they represent, it's all about data, 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 data. And and how important is it to have kind of like that um, user friendly interface or platform when it comes to you just handling data and and looking at data for let's say analytic analytics purposes as well. Mm-hmm. So. It's funny, I think it's actually the most important thing because for all of the really exciting bits of technology that have been been applied from analytics to artificial intelligence, it's really about who's using it that makes the difference. I saw a statistic a few years ago that 30% of decisions a business makes is that are based on real data, real data-fueled decisions. Although every organization kind of corners their decision-making process as data-driven, in actual fact, what's happening most of the time is business managers are saying, go find me some data that supports this conclusion I've pretty much already made. And that's not really what it's about. But when everybody in the organization can just go in and, okay, it looks like I right-click on this to get an answer here. And, okay, this is really obviously what the master values are. And this is really obviously who has control to govern this data, that makes a huge difference. So it's a, it's the small things that count sometimes. And that user interface is a big thing that makes a big difference in using the data that we're spending so much time curating. And that is so true. And when it comes to Samarki, you guys are problem solvers when it comes to the different businesses and enterprises out there. What has been kind of the, the main hindrance of of enterprises or, or businesses out there to uh, establish a, a, a data government governance uh, program? Hmm. I would say there's a few key problems that come up all the time. Governance itself is a little bit of a scary word. And heretofore, probably four or five years ago, and even years before that, The first thing you'd see in a data governance presentation is we need to set up a data governance board. I think that's dangerously old fashioned thinking because really what happens today is your governance should be collaboratively joined up across the organization. You know, it seems that Bob in accounting publishes a spreadsheet every week of all of the right account codes. And Sally over here in HR has the de facto list of here's all of our employees Uh, And it's very precise and and they're proud of that data and they publish it every week. Those are your data stewards. So data governance should come organically through through the organization and be managed in a collaborative fashion, not a dictatorial centralized one. And that's probably what's half the problem for why more data governance hasn't been implemented across the organization. The other reason is, let's face it, data people are really bad about selling these projects up the line. So data projects for the sake of data projects never get funded. It takes a business driver like GDPR that we've had recently, like regulations and fines that come across from different from other areas to really move the needle. Now, the benefits are numerous, right? Better customer satisfaction, uh, prevention of of, uh, data leaks and data breaches. All of that is an, is a collateral benefit of meeting those regulations, but it takes the regulations to get the business to stand up and take notice all too often. Wow. That, that really helps us to, to really, you know, really think about certain things in a way that, man, you know, this is, this is something that's really serious out there. It's something that, that, that everyone should really be, uh, um, really just, just just think about, especially in businesses and when, they, when they're dealing with a lot of data. And one thing I really like about the innovative uh, approach that, that you guys um, have at Samarki is that you look towards the future when it comes to MDM. You know, you just don't say, okay, this is going to fit right now, but you kind of have a for, foresight so that companies and enterprises can, can always be on the cutting edge of, of things when they change. How do you, How do you guys just... Just know that you, are you guys Jedi's over there or what? So I think the team really thought about MDM is a core enabler of a lot of things that you do across the business. But you very quickly get out of MDM and are doing things that are typically associated with data governance, data quality, and workflows. So building a single platform that addresses all of those different capabilities 
and putting a user interface that makes it easy for the business to interact with it uh, was a, a way to really future-proof the design principle within Samarki so that just like the flexibility we offer our clients, that they could change models on the fly, that they could uh, have the agility to move interfaces and change fields and add attributes, all of those sorts of things. We've built the same flexibility and agility into the back end so that we can continue to iterate and grow. So as we add new dashboards, as we add more artificial intelligence, as we add more uh, cloud-based capabilities to do more stuff with data, the platform grows with us because of the extensibility that's been baked in. Nice. And when it comes to measurable ROI, I'm sure sometimes you have ones approach you and ask you about that. And, and you guys have really have, have addressed that too. And, and please, uh, you mind sharing that with us? So data projects are notorious in that they don't get, they don't get to the business justification that they initially promised. So one of the things we do at Samarki is most of our clients started with a proof of value engagement. So this is where we spend two weeks and usually bring in a partner and really dig into the business use case, the intended ROI, uh, the roadmap of objectives for what you're trying to do. Uh, and in this way, we help our clients build a business case that they could use internally. And then because we can give them a fast cloud-based solution, they, we actually give them a full working model that they can share with the business users. And this makes a big difference because Technology people are just extraordinarily bad at hand-waving for the business users. Imagine, if you will, a solution that will do this. So making that very concrete and giving them an application that they could touch, here's the user ID and password, just log into it, and they could start playing with it, changes the whole conversation from one of what if to one of constructive feedback on what I need to conduct business that relies on data. And when we look at just how your your clients and ones who use the platform, how much they enjoy it, I mean, 60 plus fortune companies, over a thousand customers. And when you guys get that get that feedback from ones who are using using the platform, using this uh, type of integration, how does the team feel about that? I, I know you guys are, are happy that the ones are really enjoying this platform. Or do you look in a way that we're happy, but we're always looking forward to how to improve certain things to make sure we are um, ahead of the curve when it comes to tech technological advancements? Well, you know, we're very happy to have 75 or so uh, global brands that use Semarchy, mostly Fortune 1000 companies uh, and lots of different organizations. What excites us is that a lot of those clients the users in those organizations might have tens of thousands of people that are touching the Samarki platform, and many of them don't know what MDM is. They're not even sure what a data hub is. They just have to do stuff with data. So one of the things I'm very proud of is that in a lot of those organizations, there are literally thousands of people touching the system that uh, they rely on uh, and not realizing that Samarki underlies all of that. So we have the the second or third largest shipping company in the world that uses Semarchy and they run their business on our platform and they rely on it to control uh, the, the containers and the ships and the hierarchies and this sort of thing. So being able to fuel an integral part of the operational component of some of these really exciting businesses and brands uh, makes it more fun. And Michael, you bring up a very good point about how some businesses don't even know that that they need the or, or know what this means. And for ones who are listening right that right now, maybe uh, ones who are, 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 are business owners, CEOs right now, uh, maybe they're getting ready to start up a, have a startup company. How can you explain to them what this is so they can say, oh yeah, I need this too. Let me contact Michael and them. <laughs> No, that's, that's very nice of you. Uh, you know, I would say here, here's what the market, the environment looks like. There are I could spend millions of dollars on software. I could hire one of the large systems integrators uh, and do a project that'll take a year and cost me four or $5 million. It's sort of the high-end market. 
And then there's a low end market. And these are people that are cobbling together Google Sheets and whatever they can get from open source and basically trying to do something for free to solve a data based business problem. Then there's a whole big space in the middle. And that's where the intelligent data hub fits in. That's where I, I need to have a single platform to master and govern and, and uh, subject workflows to that data. And that's a big problem for a lot of organizations. And, and the ability to sort of just get out there and get started, uh, as my mother used to say, just get out there and look ugly <laughs> um, and do it yourself it is a, a hugely valuable. So I would say to those organizations, you can start today, you could build a solution that's a meaningful start to how you'll craft a final solution. And the important thing is to look at that as an iterative process that could scale and grow. A lot of these problems uh, stem from taking analysis paralysis, taking way too long to plan what you want to do and not just getting out there and getting started. Well said, well said, Michael. And is there anything else out there that we haven't covered uh, during our chat right now that, that you really would like to like to articulate out there to the audience, to, to the listener and the viewer out there about Samarki that we haven't covered yet? Oh, well, I, I think the, uh, you know, what we've talked about in terms of the user face and the user interface and, and empowering business users is important. What I think is interesting is how the market has grown. So we talk about data lakes uh, fueling a lot of innovation. We talk about data catalogs being an interesting thing that you need to have in your environment and, and different bits of technology. I would say the one thing that remains constant in all of those organizations and all of those problems as they grow is always the requirement that you can govern and connect all of the master and reference and application data that exists around your environment. So that is unchanging. And while things like shared application data management may not be the most exciting bits of what's happening in the data market these days, they're still the most important because they're, so, they're still elemental to building the success of your organization and serving your end user clients to the best extent possible. Thank you so much for sharing it uh, with us, Michael. And if one would like to know more information uh, about Simarki, what is the easiest way that they can do that? So check us out at Simarki.com, S-E-M-A-R-C-H-Y.com. Uh, interact with us uh, on Twitter and Facebook and all those sorts of things. And uh, you'll come see us at conferences. We're, uh, we're uh, a platinum sponsor of the MEM MDM Data Governance Conference coming up in November, and you'll find us at the Gartner Conferences in March as well. And we, we'd like to share as much as we've learned as possible from client engagements and, and feature some of our uh, tier one clients at those environments. Awesome. Uh, Michael, it's been great chatting with you and, and, and being uh, more enlightened on the subject when it comes to the data govern governance and and just uh, the the innovation and the platform uh, that you guys have over there at Samarki. It's uh, it's really amazing what you guys are doing over there. And we love to love to have you back on again uh, as you guys can continue to make strides in this area. And and it's been great chatting with you. Well, you're an enlightened cat, and it's excited to be exciting to be here. <laughs> Appreciate it, my friend. Once again, I'd like to thank Michael Hiskey for joining me from Samarki and talking about data. Data hubs, are you smart now like I am? <laughs> and really insightful when it comes to that subject. When we get back, there's a new organization that's revolutionizing the way we do social media. And I'm so happy to be partnered with them. And when we get back, we're gonna talk about what they've been up to lately and some new features of their program. Be right back, more show. In this world of technology, things are ever changing, rearranging. You need someone to help you out. I know someone who can. Come and take a journey with me as we go through the land of technology. You'll never be alone. You'll be with Paul. I'm a dead slain in the tech zone.